John here. So in this lesson, I'm going to show you a great warm-up routine that also works as a really good uh, left-hand technique uh, builder. And what it's all about is basically using hammer-ons instead of pull-offs. Uh, and I'm going to show you exactly what I mean by that and also some practice tips here. And I'm actually going to go through the whole thing uh, with the metronome just like I would practice it myself and actually I am practicing myself right now because this is my warm-up today so I just figured I should uh, record that uh, so we're gonna go through it like this we're gonna use uh, a very systematic way of doing it so we're gonna start on the seventh fret it could be any fret but today it's gonna be the seventh fret and we're gonna divide the left hand into six different uh, two finger combinations. We can do one, two, one, three, one, four, two, three, two, four, and three, four. So that's our combinations. And we can do them starting with the lowest finger first. So going one, two, one, two, one, three, one, three, and so on. And then we're gonna do the same thing, but reverse the orders. So we're gonna go two, one, two, one, three, one, three, one, four, one, four, one. And, uh, you're gonna see when when I play this uh, all six rings exactly what I mean, but you can also find the the full tabs on my Patreon as well. So I have a link below for that. So working with all the hammer-ons, the benefit of that is the left-hand timing first and foremost, but you also get the correct feel that you need to be able to play fluid lines with pull-offs as well, uh, because a very common problem when you work on legato initially, at least that was my problem and I see it in a ton of students, is that we try to do it in a very deliberate fashion. But even though that works at a slow tempo, it's really hard to, to do that at a faster tempo using the same type of effort. So I remember seeing Steve Vai play these legato runs and we were like, he must have the strongest hands known to man because I was sitting there sweating. Everything sounds good here, but I couldn't get any type of flow. So when I played that line, for example, uh, there's nothing specific, just a scale thing going down. Uh, I'm very relaxed in the left hand and I could not play that using this sort of over over uh, articulated way of practicing that I used to do. And I, like I said, seen a ton of students that come to me with these issues have done as well. So going to the old hammers is gonna help you with that because the, you need the same type of uh, uh, lightness in the left hand to make the old hammers work as you would need to play these faster legato lines. So it might sound weird, but I think if you try this routine for a while, you're gonna find that it carries over to your uh, normal legato playing as well. So one thing that I do so I can focus on the exact left hand technique and don't have to worry about strings ringing, uh, that's do, doing this, basically using this as a way to mute, right? So I can mute all the strings here, so I can just focus on doing the getting that motion down correctly. Uh, and you know, if you want to just mute like this, that's fine as well. Or if you have any type of muting device, use that. I don't use any type of muting devices for my regular playing, but for this type of exercise, I do it because it's just easier for me, like I said, to be able to focus on the, the left hand technique and I don't have to worry about muting uh, at all. Because muting is basically, a two-hand job. You need to mute with your right hand and you need to mute with your left hand. But by doing this, I can just focus on getting that sort of piano type feel when I practice. And that's what we're after here. And a very important thing when you do this is to focus on the timing. And, uh, and the reason for that is because when you try to do a hammer on from left to right, it's very easy because it doesn't matter what you do with this finger won't affect this finger. But that's the problem when you go from right to left. So you need to get this finger out of the way, but if you do it too early, you're gonna get a non-legato feel, and we don't want that, and you might even get an open string if you didn't mute like this. Uh, and if you get th this finger here too early, you won't get a sound at all. So the timing aspect here is crucial. And this will also carry over to your uh, you know, any type of picking things that you're gonna do, because that's 
obviously very timing uh, based because if you if you play exactly in time with the right hand and then you match that with the left hand you're going to be synchronized uh, and a lot of the time uh, when people think they have a right hand problem it's actually a left hand timing problem so by working on this this can help your synchronization a lot as well so it's a really good exercise but i can sit there and talk about this forever and if you don't try it yourself uh, you won't really understand what I'm talking about. So that's a very important uh, part of this whole thing. But I'm going to play through the entire thing now. I'm going to focus on the timing. And I'm sure it's going to be wobbly at some points. Because it's kind of a weird feel doing this. But I'm going to focus on the timing as much as possible. And that's also what I want you to do. Uh, and, and that's actually what's going to help you solve your problem. So focus on the timing uh, and the relaxation of the left hand. Uh, so I don't want you to over do it like that. It's not about the, the force, it's about the timing. And you will see that as you, as you start trying this. And I'm using a metronome here at 80 BPMs. You can, and I'm going to use eighth notes. You can do this, uh, you know, at any tempo that you want. But if you find that you make a lot of mistakes and you can't get this going, I would even try it with quarter notes, meaning you play on each click. Maybe set the metronome to 100 BPMs and try to hit each click. I'm going to play through it now and then I'm going to talk you through some technique pointers as well as we go through each string set. So, I'm going to start on the E string. go to the A string and just repeat the same thing so hopefully you can follow along here and see what I'm doing uh, if not I have the whole thing written out in tabs you can find it on my patreon so let's start on A string So it is trickier than it might look and when you try this you're really gonna feel that <laughs> that fact. Uh, so again don't get frustrated when you do this. Instead try to see it as a challenge to get each note to sound good. Uh, and you know I'm, I'm probably gonna screw it up at some point here as well but that's just the way it goes. And as long as it's not horrible just focus on the timing again and the relaxation of the left hand and then you'll find that it gets better and better for each time you do it. Obviously, if it's just a horror show, you need to lower the tempo. So, D string. And that felt way wobblier for me, so and I had one note here that was a bit off. But like I said, if that happens, don't worry about it too much. Just try to do better for the next one. But again, if you make a lot of mistakes, uh, you need to slow it down. So let's try the G string.
right. So you might find that uh, the, the finished rings are harder to do because it's less mass. Uh, or you might find the opposite. I think it depends. But this same solution, uh, like I said before, is to focus on the timing. And it's tricky to do this because it feels kind of weird not having the, the right hand doing anything. But that's what's so good about it. You, you develop your, your left hand timing way quicker that way. Uh, and you can feel like what, what finger combinations feel the worst. Uh, all right, so the B string. So that one I screwed up. So then what I usually do then is to try the combination that didn't work that well again. And it's, no, <laughs> it's kind of obvious why, why this one was a bit harder because three, four is generally gonna be harder for most people. Um, so, Again, I just try to, to, to start and get a good relaxed feel for this one and just go for a few extra reps until I feel better about it. Uh, so again, the last string here, and now it's gonna be the thinnest string. So let's give it a try. And also if you're wondering about my gauges here, it's 10 to 46 and I use uh, just standard tuning. So. Right, so that's the whole routine. Uh, obviously, you can do this on a few more frets if you want, but basically, I just pick one fret and then I go through all strings at that position. Uh, and you know, it shouldn't take that long to go through. It's going to depend on your tempo and if you need to, you know, redo some finger combinations. Uh, but in general, you know, maybe five to ten minutes tops, uh, and I think that's a good good amount for you know, being able to really focus on this stuff. And like I said in, in the beginning here in the video, I could have absolutely done this better timing wise. I could feel myself slipping it a little bit, but you try to get it as close as you can. And it's gonna be way harder uh, if you're not used to this stuff um, compared to using your, your right hand as well. So, but that's also the benefit of this exercise where you can really get a, a good idea of your rhythmic ability in the left hand. But what you want to focus on, like I said several times here, is the timing. And if you have issues with it, just slow it down. Uh, and also, as you saw here, when I had a, you know, I screwed up with the third and fourth finger, uh, basically I sit with that combination and do that a few more extra times. Uh, and that, the same thing goes with any type of, of finger combination that you have an issue with, obviously. Now, if you like this type of stuff, I have a lot more like this uh, in my Guitar Gym subscription. And you can get that uh, on my Patreon, and then you get access to the whole uh, Patreon library as well. Or you can get it as a standalone on my Teachable. The only difference between them is that the Teachable one is uh, I think it's a bit better organized because it's more like a course where you can get a better overview whereas Patreon is more, uh, you have to scroll a bit more. But they've also added the, the collections now so everything is gonna be in the same place at least. But that's the only difference and I get a lot of questions about that. Uh, so either way, if you like this type of practicing and you want to explore more of this stuff with some more routines that you can use, then definitely check that out. And as always, if you have any questions, just post them below. Otherwise, see you in the next video.